I'm sorry, you guys. Um, this will be a continuous because <sighs> I just had got a quick phone call in the middle. I apologize, but I'm back. So, um, we'll, I'll just post this up and it'll be like the second half of the video. For some reason on my phone, I can't upload both videos. It will only, only, I can only do one. So, this will be part two. So, we're going to continue. Um, next one is child abuse. Child abuse, physical and sexual abuse, neglect, verbal and emotional abuse abuse of a child um i see a lot of kids that suffer for child abuse it's very sad um i recommend if you are unhappy and you feel like that you cannot raise that child in a stable loving home it's always a choice that you have you know then to beat them and make them feel bad and it's just awful you know, those kids didn't ask to be here, you know, so I feel like it's too many options. Adoption, um, you could put them in a foster home. Like, it's too many options than to beat them and harm them and bruise them. No. Okay, next one is elder abuse. Elder abuse is similar to child abuse, but directed at elderly people. And the last one is neglect. Of, often failing to meet the basic physical or psychological needs of a person you're caring for, such as a child. This might include failing to protect them from physical harm or danger and stop or stopping them from getting medical care. It can also be neglect of or unresponsible unresponsiveness to the other person's basic emotional needs. So, um, those are the type of abuses. So now let's go to what are the signs? Okay. It says, what are the signs of domestic violence? Certain types of injuries can act as warning signs that a person may be a victim or physical domestic violence. For example, people who have multiple or repeated injuries without a logical explanation seem strangely accident prone or show tell show tell wait show tell tell marks such as bruises fingernail scratches, or cigarette burns. Other signals of domestic violence you might notice in a friend or a relative include. So, number one, this is a sign of domestic violence. Number one, they have lost their confidence or are usually, unusually quiet. That would be number sign number one. Number two, they seem afraid of their partner. So if you are out and you see a guy and a girl maybe try to grab her drink and the guy go, or vice versa, if the guy was to grab the drink and the girl go, you know, um, or, you know, if you, you are, you know, um, a girl dating a girl, it's the same thing. Guy dating a guy, it's still the same thing. You know, it's a sign of domestic violence, period. Okay, number three, they have stopped seeing their friends or family. Normally, if all of a sudden they say, I can't come out or um, I haven't seen my family in a long time, that would be a sign of domestic violence. Um Number four, their partner often criticizes them, humiliates them, order them, order, orders them about, or makes all the decision. Then that would be a sign. So, for instance, if um, 
me and one of you guys are sitting at dinner and um we're sitting with our friends and we say hey you guys want to hit the club after this and the girl says no we're not gonna hit the club and the guy can't speak or vice versa or what i explained earlier um that would be a sign of domestic violence okay number five the, their partner controls how the other person spends money, what they wear, or what they do. That would be a sign of domestic violence. Number six, they often talk about their partner's bad temper or jealousy. They might regularly accuse the other of flirting or being unfaithful. That would be a sign of of domestic violence for sure okay hold on question number seven they say their partner pressures or forces them into sexual activity so if you don't want to have sex tonight and you have your partner say hey let's do it and you say I don't want to do it and they say come on let's do it and, they, and you say, I don't want to do it again. And they say, okay, you're going to do it. That That's that's a force, you guys. That is sexual abuse. Okay? Number eight. They have physical injuries like bruises, broken bones, sprains, or cuts. That would be a sign. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. And the last one, the children seem afraid of the person or are very withdrawn or anxious. That would be a sign. So let's talk about what are some of the effects of domestic violence. It says people affected by domestic violence can feel scared anxious, have trouble sleeping, have trouble concentrating, lose confidence, and feel isolated. If you are living in a domestic violence relationship, you might find yourself changing your behavior or avoiding certain topics around the person. You may feel like you deserve the abuse or that you are to blame, but you are never to blame for someone else's behavior. Besides physical injuries, people in an abusive relationship are also at risk of sexually transmitted infections. Um, domestic violence can increase the risk of developing mental health disorders such as depression, deliberate, deliberate self-harm, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. Now, lastly, we're going to talk about what could you do when you are in a domestic violence relation, you know, situation. Okay. Okay. If you or someone else are in danger, or if you have been threatened, physically hurt, or sexually assaulted, call the number that I gave you, the National Hotline for Domestic Violence. If you think you are in an abusive relationship or know someone who might be, get help now. Trust your gut instincts, okay? So if you guys feel like someone is in a domestic violence situation or if you're in a domestic violence situation, think about what you feel. If you feel in your gut that this is wrong, you need to get out of there, get out Please, it is people that do not get a chance to get out, okay? And I need my sad squad, period.
So y'all, please get out and call that number. I told you to call, please. Okay, if you are in danger, protect yourself. That's the first thing. Get out of the situation and call the police. That's the second thing. To talk to someone you trust, whether it's a friend, family member, or a counselor who can help you decide what to do next. And it says, then come up with a plan, which you could call that hotline and they can help you with the plan. Decide what to do the next time something bad happens. If you feel safe to confront the other person, tell them that their behavior is unacceptable. Set boundaries about what you will and will not accept. You could also seek counseling, either together or alone. I prefer you do both. So that way he's on the or she's on the same page as you and you get your own counseling to get over what they have done okay for experiencing domestic violence it is it's sorry it's important to seek help as early as possible for many people who experience domestic violence the most important first step is to find a safe housing including for any children involved the police should be contacted and ongoing legal protection arranged such as an apprehended violence order avo Some people may need financial assistance to establish a new home in safety. Both victims and perpetrators require support and assistance to recover and may have mental issues that need to be addressed. So, yes, although the perpetrator is the one that's doing the abusing, they still need help also as far as counseling, getting their stuff together, trying to figure out why they did it. It's a lot that the victim and perpetrator go through. Okay. It says types of therapy for those recovering from domestic violence include supportive therapy, self-esteem building, self-empowerment techniques, and trauma therapy. If you are currently experiencing domestic violence or an unsafe and 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 in and in it's it's a tongue tie, y'all. In an intimate or family relationship, call the 24 hour national domestic violence number. Okay? And That would be all, you guys. Um, I have had friends and family that has um, suffered from domestic violence. It's horrible. I have never um, suffered for that, for that. But um, I definitely leave my heart out and ears for people that, you know, suffer from that because that's not right. And once again, I want to give you guys that number. It's the the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Once again, if you don't want to tell me, that's fine. If you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But if you are going through it or if, you know, friends or family or anybody that's suffering from that, please tell them to call 1-800-799-7233. Again, you guys, that's 1-800-799-7233. And someone would definitely help them or you. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. You know, this was a rocky subject. Um, tomorrow I'm going to do something a little different and, um, a different topic, but I think everyone has had, um, 
has talked about this, you know, domestic violence. Um, that might not have been too clear on what it was. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Press that notification bell. And Sash Squad, don't forget, I am one of the YouTubers, the only ones really, that tell you when you press that notification bell at the top, of that screen, make sure you go in and select all. Because when you select the notifications, it does not select all. You have to go in there and select all after you press the bell. So you won't miss my mug banks, my shorts, my vlogs, uh, my pranks, my lives. So you won't miss nothing. I am going to ask that you please donate at least $1 to the GoFundMe down below. I'm trying to help a family. And I will be also putting my social media in there if you would like to talk. But I do want to say before I go, comment down below if you like the name Sad Squad, the Sad Squad, because that's what you guys are today. And also, I do want to let you know, if you are suffering from domestic violence, like I said earlier, it's not your fault. And I also want to say I'm sorry. Because no one should ever go through that. Never. And you guys are my sad squad and I love you guys. And you are worth better. So if you are going through that, I want to tell you, I'm sorry. I apologize. You are a beautiful person. You are a handsome individual, male or female. You are worth everything. Know your worth, because I know. And I just wanted to let you guys know, it's not your fault, and you are worth more than that. So please call that hotline and get out. Get out of it. You too good of a person. So I wanted to say that. I love you guys. That's why when I get on here, I become a whole different person. Because you guys make me feel safe. And I want all you guys to feel safe. And make sure if you wear your mask, wear your mask. And stay safe because this virus is no, no joke. So with that being said, I love you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video.